However, that doesn't guarantee that those synapses are going to change. It does not mean that you're necessarily going to learn. Oh, no. What guarantees that that process will be converted into literally the change in the connections between neurons, sometimes new neurons, but mostly the change in the strength of the connection so that eventually you don't have to do duration path outcome. You can just be reflexive about it is states of deep sleep and any state where you're not doing duration path outcome. So we know from two recent studies, some of this was done by my lab, but by other labs as well in humans, which I think is important to distinguish between mouse and human when, where we can. A lot of the changes in these brain structures occurs after learning during deep sleep, in particular slow wave sleep. But it also occurs during periods of naps and shallow sleep, or even just periods where people deliberately decompress, where they're not focusing on any one thing in particular. So if we were gonna kind of uh, operationalize this process, it would be focus intensely, have an intense period of urgency, and then access the deepest rest you can where you're not thinking about anything, where space and time becomes very fluid. So stress in that case, post exercise or learning session would actually hinder your ability to grow and get better. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And elite performers like elite military, elite athletes, I'm sure you're familiar with this. They understand that the ability to toggle back and forth between these high alert, high attentional states and deep rest is not just the key to performing what you can already, what you can already do. It's also the ability to get better over time. You, you know, I think Goggins again is such a remarkable example because it seems like it's all gas pedal, but I'm guessing I've never asked him about this, but I'm guessing that he has his ways of recovering so that he can remain in that heavy gas pedal all, you know, significant amount of the, the day all I the mean, time. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> maybe maybe he he's just, just all gas pedal. I think he's all gas pedal. Could be. I mean, he eats well. I mean, you know, he does sleep, but he prides himself on his ability to just go, let's go, motherfucker, and just force himself to do it. It's so impressive because, you know, I think most everybody struggles to try and get themselves in action. I mean, we, we know that actions are the key to neuroplasticity. I mean, yeah, you can do some mental training and that can be powerful. You can do meditation. You can learn to access sleep and all that stuff. But ultimately, to get better at anything, you, you got to get your reps in, whatever that is, neurosurgery or running. That's interesting you say that because that's what he does with his mind. He's getting his reps in. And he describes it. He calls it armoring your mind. You have to armor your mind. And, you know, like he, he, t he told a story once about being on a plane. Some football player said, uh, you know, how do you, you know, you, how do you keep that dog alive inside of you? And he goes, it is like a dog. He goes, my fucking dog, if I feed my dog, he goes, and I feed him again, that motherfucker's always hungry. He goes, he's always hungry. He's never not hungry. He's like, you got to be that dog. You got to always be there. So he's always there. And this doesn't mean he's not a pleasant guy. I love the guy. I love hanging out with him. He's, he's great. He's great to have dinner with. He's fun. He's a good guy to be around. He's not like an asshole or anything. He's fun. But when it's go time, he's fucking ready. He's David. The, David. Goggins. Yeah, yeah. All the time. 24-7. Oh, ready absolutely. to go. Wake him up. Four in the morning. Time to run. Let's go, motherfucker. You know, stay hard. I mean, that, that's, that's what he does like all day long. He is every bit as intense as that public persona. He, yeah. when, when he came out to the lab, it was kind of 